The vote count is still underway following local elections in Ukraine, but the results from the analysts are in. They say it's a mixed picture. Was the poll a step forward or a step back for Ukraine? Leonid Bashidsky, writing in Bloomberg, will help us figure that out today, here on the Press Review. He starts by applauding efforts by Ukraine to decentralize. He says it's a good idea. But unless oligarchs and corrupt local bosses are kept out, the country risks getting a version of medieval feudal disunity instead of European self-government. The elections made that risk palpable. But quickly, Bashidsky's mood turns more negative. He compares the situation now to the one 12 months ago. He writes, a year ago, the outcome of Ukraine's first post-revolutionary parliamentary election was worth celebrating. The remnants of former President Yanukovych's region's party were on the run. The victories of the parties of Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk and President Poroshenko was evidence Ukrainians supported their reformist pro-European orientation. But, unfortunately, the good times were not to last. Since those parliamentary elections, work on reforms has been slow and many have become disillusioned. Bershidsky tells us enthusiasm faded. However, as Ukraine's economy shrank, oligarchs and corrupt bureaucrats squabbled and an area surrounding two big cities in the east, Donetsk and Luhansk, remained firmly in the hands of pro-Russian separatists. Confidence in the current government is not high, with many saying that the local elections were really a referendum on the administration of Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko. Bershidsky believes the message being sent is clear. He writes, the vote count is still underway, but it is clear that the opposition bloc and other regions' party splinters have done better than last year. But Ukrainians seem to have voted for the same corrupt elites that have run their regions throughout the country's 25 years of independence, showing that they have little confidence in the reformist rhetoric emanating from the government. Bershitsky says that in spite of all this, there is a sort of silver lining. It's not perhaps a message Ukraine's leaders would take pride in, but it might offer some hope for change. He writes, Ukraine's chaotic democracy prevents the country from turning into a Russian-style, congealed, oppressive authoritarian state. Yet corruption remains the glue holding together the politically, economically and culturally divided country. So, Bershitsky ends on a pessimistic note. Some 18 months after the pro-EU uprising, the mood in the country is far from positive. Local elections seem to have confirmed that, with the current administration having much work to do if it is to turn things around. That's all we have time for today. Join us again tomorrow for another press review. In Kiev, this is Ukraine Today.